The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. I'm the candidate that was totally committed to running for the third district right off the bat. Very important to vote. We are making a great race. I'm very proud of our campaign. Exactly. I prefer to come to the polling. What's affecting you? How can I help? Every vote counts. Good morning and thanks for joining us on this busy Wednesday. I'm Maddie Jansen and I'm Alex Fisher. 17 News is your local election headquarters in this morning. We're looking at the results from last night's primary election. Votes are still being counted at this hour, although we're getting a good look at the top vote getters in many races in Kern County and across California. The results will determine which two candidates will face off in November's general election. And we have a lot to get to this morning, but first we begin with 17's political reporter Maddie Gannon breaking down what we know so far and the significance of these results. Maddie. Maddie Alex, it could be days or even weeks before we know final results in many of these races, but there's a lot to take away from the votes we have so far. And we should note our candidates are facing brand new district lines for the first time in a decade after the process of redistricting was completed this winter. This is the first time we are seeing any votes come in from these new lines. So let's dive in to it, starting with the new 20th Congressional District. Let's first take a look at the political changes to the district. Previously, Republicans outregistered Democrats here by about 10%. Redistricting gave the GOP a big boost here. Republicans now edge out Democrats by 21%. Moving to the results we have so far, Kevin McCarthy, of course, the Republican incumbent who is currently House minority leader leads with about 58% of the vote as of this morning. McCarthy will move on to the November general election and he released a statement last night thanking the voters in the 20th district. We're still waiting to see who he will be challenging in November, but right behind him in the votes we have Democrat Fairfax junior high teacher Marisa Wood with about 27% of the vote. The other Democrat in this race, Ben Duell, takes third right now. Then we have two Republican candidates, James Davis and Jim McCulley, rounding it out with a small portion each. We've talked about this before, but some important points here. This is a very significant election for McCarthy, not as much for his reelection chances. If the, but if the GOP picks up enough houses, na house seats nationwide, McCarthy is in li line to be speaker. And moving to the 22nd congressional district in the old districts, Democrats had a 16.2 registration ads over Republicans here. Now in the new district, Democrats got a very marginal boost, now leading Republicans with about 16.6. 7% registration edge. Here's what we have so far. The AP is calling Rudy Salas will move on to the runoff election in November. He currently leads the pack of candidates here with 48% of the votes. We still don't know who Salas will face in November, but currently the Republican incumbent David Valadeo is next with about 26% of the votes. The other two Republicans, Chris Matisse and Adam Medeiros, splitting the rest of the vote here so far. This is a very interesting race. It's one of the most competitive in in the nation this year. As we just saw a minute ago, Democrats have a sound registration edge over Republicans, but Democrats have come out to the polls in very small numbers previously. That's part of the reason we've seen Valadeo be able to represent this key the seat in Congress for so many terms. Looking at the vote we have so far, Democrats appear to have turned out for Salas. On the Republican side, Valadeo has received backlash from the GOP in his district for his vote to impeach former President Donald Trump. Matisse and Medeiros have tailored their campaigns around their support for the former president. But Trump didn't weigh in on this race and endorse a challenger to Valadeo as he did for other House Republicans who voted to impeach him. It appears so far voters in the 22nd district are supporting Valadeo over Matisse and Medeiros. Now let's go to the state Senate and take a look at the 16th Senate district. Previously, Democrats had a very strong registration edge over Republicans, leading the GOP by a 19% margin. After redistricting, it's still a solidly blue district, but that 19% registration edge decreased with Democrats now only leading with a 12% margin. And let's go to the results that we have as of this morning. Republican farmer from Porterville, David Shepard, leads the crowded field here with about 42% of the vote. He's trailed by Democrats current state senator Melissa Hurtado and former Assemblymember Nicole Parra with 31% and 14 
uh, percent of the vote respectively. Rounding out the race right now is Republican Pastor Gregory Tatum with 8 percent and Democrat Mayor of Delano Brian Azorio with 4 percent of the vote. Of course, it is still very early in the counting, but some key insights we can take away so far. As mentioned, this is a Democrat majority district, but Republican and political newcomer Shepard has run away with the vote so far. Right now, it appears redistricting could have made this district a little friendlier to the GOP. Hurtado and Para have had a heated campaign season, publicly feuded, feuding. So far, Hurtado is edging out Para. The top two vote getters in this district will move on to the general, regardless of party affiliation. And the last race we are taking a look at here, the 12th state Senate district, before redistricting Republicans out registered Democrats here by about 12 percent. The GOP got another big gain in this district after redistricting. Republicans now lead in registration by a margin of about 18 percent. The results as of this morning, Republican incumbent Shannon Grove leads with 64 percent of the vote. She is being challenged by Democrat Suzanne Gundy, who has about 36 percent of the vote right now. Both candidates will move on to November's general election because there's only two candidates in this race. Grove is seeking her fifth term in the state legislature. If she wins, this will be her last term due to term limits. All right, a lot that you just covered there, Maddie. Um, <laughs> first off, thanks for coming in. I know you have not gotten an hour or even a bit of sleep Happy to uh, be here. since last Happy night. Uh, but obviously, the results are in. There's a lot of speculation leading up to a lot of these races. What is one thing, as you're looking at all the results this morning, what is one thing that really stands out to you? Well, definitely the 16th Senate results right now. David Shepard, he's a political newcomer. He's a new face. He's a Republican. This is a district that, as we just talked about, leans Democratic in terms of registration. Both Melissa Hurtado and Nicole Parra are well-known Democrats here. Melissa Hurtado is the current incumbent in this district. Nicole Parra is a former Bakersfield Assembly member. So many thought that those two would be battling it out for first place, but instead you were seeing this new political face and Republican taking the early lead here. So it's a very interesting dynamic. All right, Maddie, thanks so much. We'll check back in with you in a little bit. Thank you. All right, 5.07 is our time now, and both local Democrats and Republicans, they gathered to watch results come in last night, and both are declaring victory in some key races. And we'll tell you about what the Democrats had to say in just a little bit uh, as they build, deal with both defeat and victory. But first, let's check in with 17's Robert Price with a look at what races local Republicans are watching. Alex, Maddie, I'm here at 1933 in Northwest Bakersfield. This is the Republican Victory Party, or so they were hoping, and there were some victories to be had, at least as far as we can tell right now. Jeff Flores running for third district supervisor, running for his boss's old seat. Mike Maggers retiring after 20 years. Uh, as of now, as of well, as I speak to you right now, Jeff is looking pretty good. He's been ahead uh, a slight lead, but it's been a steady lead throughout the evening. I did talk to Jeff earlier in the evening about how he was feeling. I'm feeling good. I'm cautiously optimistic, but there's a lot of precincts that still have to report in. But uh, I'm content and I'm at peace. Uh, it can take days, weeks, up until a final certification. But I'm hoping that we have some type of closure and definitive look uh, tonight or tomorrow, um, it, no matter what the case is. Not a lot of candidates were at this event tonight. Flores, as I mentioned, Todd Reeves, who's running for assessor, was also here. He's been running behind Laura Avila throughout the evening. One little surprise, David Shepard up in Porterville is running for six, uh, 16th State Senate District seat. He's running against the incumbent Melissa Hurtado and Nicole Parra. He has been running ahead, which is a bit of a surprise, but it's early on. We'll have more for you later today at Republican headquarters for the evening at 1933. Robert Price, back to you. Now we turn to the Democrats as they deal with defeat and victory. 17's Christian Galeno spent the night monitoring the action as the results came in. Yeah, well, supporters for Leticia Perez, Luis Gill, and Rudy Salas continue showing their support, even vowing support for those candidates that have another battle in November. And it's actually that support from Democratic voters that's going to help them achieve what they want to see in November. Now, two of the candidates who local Democrats stood behind are now facing one final battle in November, the most competitive race in the district. Rudy Salas is the only Democrat hoping to 
front seat incumbent David Valadeo from the 22nd Congressional District. That vote then, as votes continue to trickle in, we are seeing that it's setting him up for that real battle in November. Then all eyes are also on the newly drawn 35th Assembly District, which stretches from Arvin to Delano and includes much of East Bakersfield. County Supervisor Leticia Perez quite possibly heading to Sacramento to a much bigger arena to represent Kern County with hopes to keep that seat blue. And at last check, Perez was in the lead um, over Dr. Jasmine Baines. I think that people are saying that they recognize our hard work, that, you know, we're always out there. We're always doing something in our community. We're fighting for infrastructure. We're fighting to make sure that their kids have opportunities in our schools. They're fight they, they recognize that we're fighting to lower the cost of their bills, prescription drug costs. Uh, you know, I was the only person to, uh, one of the only Democrats to vote to suspend the gas tax. You know, people recognize that. You know, the state has gone very blue, as you know, and the county is becoming increasingly Democratic. I think her County is much more of a purple center, and that's what's so exciting about this seat is that Kern County has one assembly seat to go forth and represent its vast and complex issues to the state to ensure that we become wealthy, that we become the carbon capture managers of the globe, and we retain our prowess by demonstrating who Kern County really is. So I feel incredibly grateful tonight. My heart is full. I love Kern County. I feel like Kern County loves me. And I'm ready to go to Sacramento and say, Kern County's at the table, right? We're not leaving without a whole lot of money and opportunity because we deserve it and we have the goods. I believe that. Now, other races that we are keeping an eye on are for the third supervisor district. This is the one that Lewis Gill hoped to take over as well. Jeff Floor is well over the lead, but again, too close to call quite yet. The other race is for the state Senate's 16 district. This is the one where Democrat Melissa Hurtado uh, was hoping to keep that seat as well. Right now, she's quite possibly in the lead, but closely followed by Republican David Shepard. Um, and those votes continue to trickle in as well so we'll keep you updated with the latest information on our website kget.com as well as our newscast during the day for now reporting in central bakersfield christian galeno 17 news Kern County Sheriff Donnie Youngblood running unopposed for his fifth four-year term in office. Here's a look at the results. Youngblood spoke to 17 news last night and said the sheriff's office has some challenges ahead Recruitment and retention, you know, at the top of my list is we have 127 vacant deputy positions. We've got to fill those positions and we're going to work diligently on doing exactly that. And young blood holding a watch party at the Crystal Palace with Kern County District Attorney Cynthia Zimmer, who's also running unopposed for her second term in office. Her thoughts now on what's ahead for the next four years. I want the public to know that I will work very hard in the next four years to keep the community safe, to stand up for victims' rights, and to make sure that there is equal justice in our courts. Again, Zimmer running unopposed in this election, and right now she had 24,000 votes cast uh, in this election. Welcome back here at 515. Six members of an inmate firefighting crew were injured in a training exercise just south of the Kern County line. Paramedics responded to Golden State Highway north of Castaic just after 11 a.m. yesterday for reports of burns. One of the victims was flown to the hospital in critical condition. Five others suffered minor injuries. Details about what caused the incident are still unclear. The Los Angeles County Fire Department says all six patients were, were inmate firefighters with the State Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. We now know the name of a man killed in a gnarly crash in Oildale. You may remember it happened Monday evening. This car came to rest in front of a yard on Woodrow Avenue. The coroner says 21 year old Jerry Wayne Chris was driving and died in the crash. No word on other injuries. And we're following some breaking news from overnight of a massive fire in East Bakersfield. Crews were called to this two alarm fire at a building on Chico and Sonora streets around 945 PM. City and county fire crews helped to douse the flames. It wasn't immediately clear if anyone was inside the building or if anyone was hurt. We'll bring you more updates to this story as we learn more information. In your 17 homicide tracker this morning, sheriff's deputies are investigating a double homicide in Oildale at the California Veterans Assistance Foundation facility on Decatur Street. Deputies were called out at about 8.40 a.m. for a report of two adults suffering from traumatic injuries. When they arrived, Deputies discovered two adults dead. 
Next door neighbor John Rogers said he often hears men shouting from the veterans home, often threatening each other. Rogers said residents of the home appear to have mental health issues. It'd be around two, three o'clock in the morning, they'd be hollering, shut the F up, I'm gonna kill you. And they'd be fighting back there all the time. It really doesn't surprise me because they have a lot of mental issues over there. When they get out in the middle of the Decatur and stop traffic, they got mental issues. Sheriff's officials on the scene had no comment. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.